Live from Fino Field here in Milford, MyFM 101.3 is happy to bring you coverage of Milford Legion Baseball. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Coet here with you on the call on this dreary Tuesday afternoon. But we are set to resume day number three of this 2017 Massachusetts Legion State Tournament. And Post 59 living on here to day number three of the tournament after suffering that disappointing 11-8 loss to Newton on day one. Milford with their backs up against the wall returned to action on Sunday. They served as the visiting team as they took on Somerset post 228. Both teams facing elimination. And Milford also facing some adversity early in the game after jumping out to a 3-0 lead. They saw Jonathan Rice give two of those runs right back to Somerset before exiting the game with injury, leaving the rest of the game in the hands of the Milford bullpen. Alex Gunfriday was first out of the pen. He was able to shut down that first inning rally for post-228. And the Milford offense was able to step to the forefront from there, a tremendous 10-run rally in the second inning to gain some separation. Single run scored over the final innings of the game, and of course the real offensive highlight of the day was a three-run inside the park home run by Aiden Wild. And Milford was ultimately able to earn a mercy rule victory here in the state tournament by a final score of 15 to four. We are getting close to game time as we are already getting the national anthem played here at field level. So we will step aside very briefly and we'll have our coach's corner when we come back next year on this coverage of Milford Legion Baseball on MyFM 101.3. And we welcome you back inside Fino Field. Ladies and gentlemen, getting a very abrupt start to this game here today. More than five minutes ahead of schedule, and we've already seen the first batter, so we do apologize for that brief delay in the action. But Joe Sanchione leading off this top of the first inning for Milford, sending a ground ball to second base that was mishandled by the Northampton second baseman, Tim Horton. And so Sanchione reaches on the error to open up this game, and we will continue to keep you updated on all of our pregame information. We'll get to that now in between the top and bottom of this first inning. Expecting a, seven, a 105 first pitch here today, but getting started much earlier than that, as now Joe, excuse me, Sean Ribello sends a line drive out to shallow right field for a base hit. And so this game getting going at lightning speed as we've already now seen two batters come to the plate for post 59, Sankione reaching on the error, and now Sh Sean Ribello with the bloop base hit out to right. And a quick throw from Hector De Jesus out in right field for Northampton nearly got Sankione at second. He was just able to beat the throw. So two runners on with nobody out for post 59 as they go up against the starter for Northampton post 28, Zach Britton. Not to be confused with the Baltimore Orioles closer, Zach Britton. He deals in a strike to Aiden Wild, who was red hot at the plate on Sunday against Somerset. And Wild now with an even count of a ball and a strike. So Sankione is your lead runner at second base after reaching on the error. And Sean Ribello now at first after his base hit. And Aiden Wild at the plate facing Zach Britton, the right-handed starter for post 28, who deals in ball two up and into Wild. So we will bring you our injury report, our starting lineups, and your game time temperature at the close of the top half of the first inning. But baseball underway once again here in the state tournament as Aiden Wild sends a high fly ball that twists foul and out of play, and that evens the count at two and two. Milford facing Northampton post 28 today who got off to a hot start in the tournament with a mercy rule victory 11 to one over Barnstable and then faced a very tough Braintree team on Sunday, a close game, but Braintree was able to win by a final of 13 to eight sending Northampton to the loser's portion of the bracket as Aiden Wild crushes one a ton out to left field, but that ball is foul. That had home run distance. But 
could not keep it fair. Aiden Wild has a home run here at Fino Field under his belt this season. It came back on the 4th of July against Framingham. But that ball sent foul. It keeps the count at two balls and two strikes. Milford threatening right out of the chute here in the top of the first. The next pitch is hit hard out to the gap in left center field. That is over everyone's head, rolling deep into the gap. Sankione rounding third base. He will score. They will wave Sean Ribello to the plate. It is a two-run double for Aiden Wild, picking up right where he left off on Sunday. And just three batters into the game. Post 59 takes a two-to-nothing lead. So Aiden Wild nearly sending one over the left field fence, hooking it just foul, but comes back and drills one out into the gap in left center field for a two-run double. And post 59, able to take an early lead. And so for the second day in a row, Milford serving as the road team here on their home ballpark, but they are enjoying getting these first at bats. Now a pickoff play on at second base. The throw ends up drifting out into center field, but no advance from Wild. The throw coming into the second baseman, Horton. And they had Wild a bit flat-footed. He was able to dive back in. Of course, the throw getting away. But now Wild walks back out to a lead at second base, a pretty sizable lead. As the first pitch comes in to the cleanup hitter, Tyler Monahan, it's a called strike. No outs here in the top of the first inning, and Milford already with a 2 to nothing lead. Britton now ready with the 0-1 pitch. Monahan lets it go, but it hits the inside corner. And Tyler is down, nothing in two. Monahan with an RBI double as part of that 10-run rally in the second inning for Milford against Somerset on Sunday. It takes the 0-2 pitch up under the chin for ball one. Monahan has had solid numbers overall in these playoffs. As now we see a bluff throw down to second base. And again, Wild is able to get back. Trying to keep the speedy Aiden Wild close to that second base bag, but again has a very large lead. The one two into Monahan is floated out to right field. Coming in is DeJesus. He makes the catch. Wild tags, but he will hold at the second base bag. And so Monahan is out on the fly ball to right, and there is your first out of this top of the first inning. After the first three batters were able to reach. And that brings up Alex Reynolds, who has been extremely hot at the plate. The turning point in these playoffs for Reynolds was that game in Lemonster. The runner takes off for third base. Here's the throw down. It's offline, and Wild is in with the steal. You could tell it was only a matter of time before Wild took off. Chose the first pitch of the Reynolds at bat to do so. Able to get in safely, so now another runner at third base for Milford with still just the one out. It's a one ball, no strike count on Reynolds. Eight for 16 through the zone playoffs and state tournament combined. Now hits one hard out to left field, but right into the glove of Will O'Connor. Tagging at third base is Wild. He comes to the plate, he scores, and it's a sacrifice fly for Reynolds. He drives in his seventh run batted in of these 2017 playoffs and gives Milford a three to nothing lead. So that clears the bases now for Milford with two outs. And at bat now for Zach Sasitsky. Ended up going hitless in the game yesterday. It's his first game in the playoffs that he did not record at least one hit. He's had several multi-hit games in the playoffs, still overall between zone and state tournament combined. Sasitsky eight for 20 with six runs batted in. Rounds this ball slowly over towards first base. Pat Gregashevitz, the first baseman for Northampton, able to make the play and tags the first base bag for the out that ends the inning. But for the second straight day in the tournament, Milford is able to tag three runs on the scoreboard early, and they take a 3 to nothing lead before Northampton comes to the plate. First for the Milford lineup, Joe Sanchione leading it off at shortstop. Sean Ribello, the center fielder, batting second, with Aiden Wild, the DH, batting third. 
Tyler Monahan, the cleanup hitter and third baseman with Alex Reynolds catching and batting fifth. Zach Sisitsky plays left field and bats sixth with Kyle Nocera, the first baseman, batting seventh. Michael Farrell is the right fielder batting eighth and in the ninth spot is the second baseman, Tyler Almeida. And for Northampton post 28, their starting lineup looks like this. Hector DeJesus, the right fielder, leads off. Tim Horton plays second base and bats second with Ian Ostberg, the shortstop, batting third. Will O'Connor is the left fielder, batting cleanup with Kevin Bannis, the center fielder, batting fifth. Pat Gregashevitz, the first baseman, bats sixth with Derek Zawinski, the third baseman, batting seventh. Mike Michkowski, the designated hitter, bats eighth and in the ninth spot and catching today is Andrew Serio. And your pitching matchup in the game, Zach Britton you saw pitching the top of the first inning for Northampton and now ready to begin the bottom half of the first inning for post 59 is Alex Masick. Masick already set now to face Hector DeJesus, the leadoff batter. And Masick the righty into his windup. Here's the first pitch of the inning. It's high for ball one. DeJesus a right-handed batter. Facing the right-handed, tossing Alex Masick. Here's the 1-0 showing bunt now. He takes the pitch up and in and jumps ahead in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Our final bit of business from our Consigli Ruggiero Funeral Home pregame show is our game time temperature, which is brought to you by Bellingham Electric. For your next appliance purchase, it's Bellingham Electric sales and service on Pulaski Boulevard in Bellingham and not a summer-like day here today as the next pitch is in for a called strike. Overcast skies on and off drizzle here at the field and a temperature at 59 degrees here at 103 in the afternoon on July 25th. So not feeling like summer here at the state tournament today. We at least hope the sun will make a return appearance tomorrow. Temperatures are expected to be only in the 70s through the rest of the week. So a cool spell here in Milford. Here's the 2-2 pitch now into DeJesus, and it's in for a called strike three. So after misfiring on the first two pitches, Masick able to come back to get the strikeout to open his performance. Coming into the game today, Alex Masick had made eight appearances on the pitcher's mound in 2017, five of them starts. Coming in with a three and one record, a 1.70 ERA. And now deals a called strike one into the number two batter, Tim Horton. Masick in 33 innings pitched has allowed 30 hits, 21 runs, but only eight of them earned. He's walked eight to 31 strikeouts, opposing hitters batting 210 against Masick, who's already ahead of Horton 0 and 2, and now misses with a pitch low and away. And Horton now battling with a one ball, two strike count. The Northampton second baseman ready to see another pitch, and again, it's away. Masick trying to get Important to chase the pitch off the outside part of the plate. Alex with a very good pace so far in this inning. Here's his 2-2. And that's in for a called strike three. Just nicking the inside part of the plate right in on the hands of Horton. But an effective pitch for Masick as he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. And you heard in our coach's corner, Coach DeVito talking about the importance of Alex Masick to settle into this outing early. A lot of times his troubles this season have come in the early innings, so trying to get him a little bit of extra work pregame, a little bit of an extra warm-up session to try to get him loose for this game. He's looked very good so far here in the first, dealing a called strike one now into Ian Osberg, who floats one out to shallow left field, and that is going to drop in for a bloop base hit. Sankioni out, Sasitsky in but it ends up dropping for a two-out base hit for the shortstop, Ian Ostberg. And that will now bring up Will O'Connor, one of the hottest bats in this Northampton lineup and was really the hero that propelled Northampton to this state tournament with his offensive performance against East Springfield. That decided the representative from districts one, two, and three for the state tournament. O'Connor takes the first pitch high for ball one as Masick now pitches from the stretch. Longer set now for Masick. He deals in the 1-0. It's hit hard on the ground, but through the left side of the infield. Sankioni with a good effort with the dive, but did not come close to it. That was well placed, and 
All of a sudden now, back-to-back -back hits, puts runners at first and second base with two outs, and neither of these balls have been hit particularly hard. The bloop base hit that dropped down in shallow left field, and now a sinking line drive that dropped on the infield dirt on the left side and just snuck past Monahan and Sankione. Two on and two out now for the center fielder, Kevin Bannis. First pitch of the at-bat. It's a fastball that misses upstairs. Bannis, another right-handed hitter. Runners leading off of first and second base. Here's the pitch. And that one misses, not by much. Masick pounding the glove after that one did not get called in the strike zone. Thought it was a good pitch. 2-0 the count. Masick suddenly in some trouble. And now a hard line drive. That's a fair ball out to left field. Around from second base comes Osberg. He will score as the throw comes into third. It's an RBI single for Kevin Bannis. Three hits in a row now, all with two outs for Northampton. And they're able to steal a run back to cut the deficit now to three to one. And so all of this turning around in the blink of an eye for Alex Masick. Collecting back-to-back -back strikeouts to open the inning. Looked like it was going to be a fast frame. But Northampton with other ideas, and this is an offense that can produce in a hurry, showing that here. Three straight base hits to supply a run. And now a first pitch strike into Pat Bregashevitz, the first baseman. Will O'Connor now the lead runner at second base with Kevin Bannis at first after his RBI hit. And Masick now missing outside. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Two outs deep in the bottom half of the first inning. And again, if you are just tuning in, this game getting an early start. Milford is the visiting team in this state tournament contest. As now the ball has popped up very high and foul over towards the third base dugout. Will there be room? And it just sneaks beyond the chain link fence. Both Alex Reynolds and Tyler Monahan racing over all the way to that fence. But dropping down just on the other side, and the count goes to one and two. Defensively for Milford, it is Alex Reynolds behind the plate, Tyler Monahan at third, Joe Sanchione at short, Tyler Almeida at second, and Kyle Nocera at first. Left to right in the outfield, Zach Sasitsky, Sean Ribello, and Michael Farrell. Alex Masick on the hill. He's ahead of Pat Gregashevitz, one and two. Tying runs on for Northampton. Here's the pitch. And a half swing. He went around, said the home plate umpire. Gregashevitz disagrees, but he will take with him the third strikeout of the inning. Masick strikes out the side, but three hits in between. Allows Northampton to grab a run. And at the close of one inning of play here on day three of the state tournament, it is Milford 3 and Northampton 1 on coverage of Milford Legion Baseball on MyFM 101.3. Zach Britton back on the hill for post 28, dealing with batters 7, 8, and 9 in the post 59 order. And ball one sent in to Kyle Nocera. The righty ready with another pitch, and this is hit hard out to center field, but right in his tracks, Kevin Bannis is able to make the catch. And even a lot of the outs Milford has made so far in this game have been loud outs. We've seen a lot of hard contact hit right to these Northampton outfielders. Monahan sending a hard shot out to right. The sacrifice fly from Alex Reynolds hit right on the screws. Kyle Nocera sending that one hard out to center field, but out number one. And now Michael Farrell taking a look at a called strike as he bats in this number eight spot. Now chops one on the ground. It kicks foul off the third base side. And Farrell is down, nothing and two. Michael, five for 14 throughout these playoffs. Does have four runs batted in and four runs scored. And he's also hit three doubles. So three of his five hits have been for extra bases in this zone playoffs and state tournament combined. But here a swing and a miss. 
and he will go down on strikes. And a much better start to this inning for Zach Britton as he's able to get the first two outs quickly. Britton allowing three runs on two hits in the top of the first inning, one of those runs unearned. Now Tyler Almeida takes a ball outside. Tyler with four hits so far in these playoffs and 16 at bats here. He hits one hard out to right field down the line. That's a fair ball and it will be extra bases for Almeida as he hustles down the line towards second and he slides in safely with a two out double. Sent that one right down the line and right. Was clearly going to stay fair and Almeida, good hustle right out of the box. Was able to get into second base. The throw came in good several feet away to the second baseman who was not covering the bag. So a double for Almeida. Keeps the inning going now. And we'll see a second at bat for Joe Sanchione in the game. Sanchione came to the plate three times in just the first two innings of Milford's win against Somerset on Sunday. Now takes the first pitch at the knees for a called strike one. Sanchione reaching on an error by the second baseman to lead off the ball game. And eventually came around to score as part of that two run double from Aiden Wild. The L1 pitch that comes inside. Sanchione just able to jackknife out of the way. And the count evens at one. Longer look into the plate this time for Zach Britton to his battery mate, Andrew Serio. And now the pitch is floated out to shortstop, but that one hanging up for Ian Osberg to make the catch. In on the hands and floated out to shortstop. Osberg makes the catch and that will retire the side here in the second inning. So Milford strands a runner in scoring position. And after an inning and a half here on day three of the state tournament, Milford holds a three to one edge over Northampton on this coverage of Milford Legion Baseball on MyFM 101.3. Alex Masick back to the hill into his windup and ready to start the bottom half of the second inning and first pitch swinging Derek Zawinski able to hit it hard through the left side. And there's the fourth hit now already of the game for post 28. The third baseman, Derek Zawinski, all over that first pitch, hitting it hard between Monahan and Sankione. So Northampton now out hitting Milford 4-3. to three. Post 59 leading this game 3-1, to one, getting all three of those runs in the top of the first inning. Now the number eight hitter, Mike Michkowski, sees the ball go to the backstop and to second base goes Zawinski. And so it's been a little bit of a roller coaster here for Alex Masick now through these first two innings. Looked very sharp as he faced those first two batters of the first inning and then eventually the final batter of the inning. But in between, allowing three straight hits to give Northampton their first run. And a hard hit ball for a base hit to lead off the second and a wild pitch. Brings the count to 1-0 on Michkowski and now Masick battles back with a called strike. Masick has made a brief appearance out of the bullpen in this state tournament. That came back on Saturday night against Newton. Here's his 1-1 pitch. This is hit in the air to first base. And a lunging grab made by Nocera now sends a throw to second base. It's offline, but the runner will hold at second and might be shaken up as he and Sankione collided. So right now, Derek Zawinski now able to get to his feet. He was seated right on top of the second base bag for a few moments after that play completed. But he holds there. Nocera with a great catch on a hard line drive to first base. He was able to leap and lunge for it to make the catch. And then a quick release on that throw to second base to try to get the double play, but the throw got away from Sankione out into left, but no further advance, no advance, advance at all, I should say, for the runner. 
So Michkowski retired, one out, and that runner at second base for the number nine hitter, Andrew Serio. Serio able to start, a, start off ahead in the count, one and oh. Pitch misses high. This team was very impressive through their run in the regular season end zone playoffs, accumulating a record of 23 and four. 2-0 pitch, misses outside. And a team similar to Milford. Their offense was their forte through the regular season. A lot of lopsided scores and really an intriguing trip through the zone playoffs, eventually matched up with East Springfield in their zone finals and a highly entertaining back and forth three game series. East Springfield winning the first game 15 to seven. As the 3-0 pitch now into Serio is a called strike. And East Springfield able to jump out to a lead in game two. And so with Northampton's back up against the wall, they were able to mount a comeback and edge out of victory eight to seven, forcing a deciding game, which eventually Northampton was able to win handily by a final score of 19 to three. So that set up Northampton as the zone one, two and three champion. And now we're seeing the three man umpiring crew come together. Conversation on the way, a lot of pointing going on over towards the third base coaches area, the first base coach, or the third base dugout, I should say, in the first base dugout, it looks like maybe some cameramen had wandered a little bit too far onto the field and the umpires wanting to make sure they are completely off the playing surface. And so now we are set to continue. So just a little bit of extra press coverage for this game, having to keep that under control. Now the 3-1 pitch, that is in for a strike. Full count now to Serio as Northampton now starts to bring the chatter out of that third base dugout. Mesa comes to the set. Here's the payoff pitch and it's chopped on the ground up the middle, ranging forward is Sanchione. He makes the play, the throw to first is high. Did they get the tag applied? Yes, they did. So Sanchione on the run was able to scoop that ball, throwing off balance to first base. It was high, Nocera able to pull it down and slap the tag down on Serio just before he reached the first base back. So there is another strong defensive play for Kyle Nocera at first base. He claps his glove out towards his other defenders and now getting a high five from Tyler Almeida for his effort. Coach DeVito now out of the dugout for a conversation with Masick. Zawinski was able to advance to third base on that slow developing play from Sankione to Nocera. So two outs and a man at third. Coach DeVito happy to see his defense making some plays. The throw was certainly not the best out of Sankione, but a good rangy play to come in on the infield grass to make the play. And Nocera able to take care of the rest over on the first base side. Defense, of course, is going to be key for Milford in this game. Can they keep it? under control. So now we go back up to the top of the Northampton order. Hector De Jesus takes a called strike. De Jesus struck out looking in his first at bat. And now the 0-1 pitch is a breaking ball that misses high. As we mentioned, Masick pitching an inning back on Saturday night. Allowed just one hit, struck out two through 20 pitches. Now has a one ball, one strike count on De Jesus. The pitch misses outside. Two balls and one strike on the batter. Zawinski with a lead off of third base. Here's the pitch, it's a floater out to second base just over the glove of Tyler Almeida. Out into right field, the runner scores from third base. An RBI single with two outs for Hector De Jesus, and this game tightens up again, now at three to two. So more productivity with two outs from this Northampton offense. 
getting everything done with two outs last inning. Now here in the second, getting the leadoff base hit. Milford able to get the next two outs, but DeJesus just able to float that ball over the extended reach of Tyler Almeida. He jumped for it, and the ball just sneaking over his glove. And now first pitch swinging. Tim Horton drives the ball out to right field, sending Farrell back, but he is there to make the catch. And that out will retire the side. A drive to right field off the bat of Tim Horton, but into the glove of Farrell. And we're through two innings now from this day three of state tournament action. A close one unfolding between Milford and Northampton, post 59 with the 3-2 lead. And more to come next on MyFM 101.3. Score now 3-2. Milford grabbing three runs in the top of the first inning. Northampton coming back with single runs in the bottom of the first and the bottom of the second. Milford is the visitors. Northampton the home team. Milford coming to the bat now in the top half of the third. Sean Rebello gets it started. Looks at a called strike one from Zach Britton, the right-handed starter for post 28. Here's his 0-1 pitch. It's hit hard on the ground, deep to the hole at shortstop. Osberg with a diving play. A low throw to first base. Gregashevitz can't pick it, and Rebello will be safe. It was great reactions from Osberg to be able to go into a slide far to his right, backhanding the ball, keeping it on the infield. He was able to release a quick, strong throw with Rebello's speed. Initially, it looked like there was no chance the throw would get there in time. The throw did beat Rebello. But Gregashevitz, the first baseman, was unable to pick the throw. And now an awkward pickoff throw to first base bounces, gets away from the first baseman, and Rebello will head down to second base. I think they will ultimately rule that a base hit for Rebello with the degree of difficulty that Osberg faced. But that will certainly go as a throwing error on the pitcher, allowing Rebello to get to second base. Ball might have slipped out of Britton's hand. It ended up bouncing on the infield grass and deflected out into right field. So a runner in scoring position, and Aiden Wild now with the first pitch he sees is hit right on the backside. And he will head down to first. Very familiar territory for Aiden Wild, as that is now the 13th time on the year he has been hit by a pitch is the team lead in that category. I don't think that's a stat category Wild would prefer to be leading in. But it gets him on base here, two on with nobody out now for Tyler Monahan. He swings at the first pitch. It's in on the hands and he fouls it over into the third base dugout. Monahan 0 for 1. He flew out to right field his first time. From the stretch now, the 0-1 pitch drops in low. Good block from Andrew Serio behind the plate. Defensively for Northampton, it is Andrew Serio behind the plate. Drew Zewins Derek Zewinski at third, Ian Ostberg at short, Tim Horton at second, and Pat Gregashevitz at first. Left to right in the outfield, Will O'Connor, Kevin Bannis, and Hector DeJesus. As now Britton backs off the pitching rubber. And the two Milford runners head back to their respective bases. Now back out to a lead. Rebello at second, Wild at first. And the 1-1 pitch is low for ball two. The head coach for Northampton post 28 is Chuck Holt. Anxiously looking on in this inning as Milford is threatening for another rally. Another low pitch into Monahan brings him ahead in the count. Three balls and a strike. Monahan heading into today was 9 for 22 between the zone playoffs and the state tournament with five runs batted in, eight runs scored, five doubles for Monahan through these playoffs. He's also walked three times, so he has been very productive as he was in the regular season. The overall batting average for the year for Tyler at 426. Brief conference on the mound between pitcher and catcher and now set to resume. 
Here's the 3-1 pitch, and Monahan hits it hard, but right to the third baseman, who will tap the third base bag. Now the throw across the diamond is in and out of Gregashevitz's glove, so that will allow Monahan to reach. Monahan sending that one quickly over to third base, but Suwinski down to a knee was able to field it. He tapped the third base bag to record the force out of Sean Rebello. And then the throw across the diamond, another close play, but Monahan able to get there, so he reaches on the fielder's choice. On the play, Wild down to second base. He's now the lead runner with one out. And Alex Reynolds swinging at the third base, uh, swinging at the first pitch again, hits it to third. And this time, Northampton is able to execute the five to three inning ending double play. So Milford sends two rockets over to third base in the inning. But great plays both times out of Zawinski. First, he's able to get the force play. And now here, he's able to pick that shot from Reynolds on the backhand, tap the bag, and throw to first to complete the five to three inning ending double play. Superb defense turned in by Drew Zawinski, Northampton's third baseman, and that spoils a potential rally for post 59. It stays a three to two score here on MyFM 101.3. Well, Zach Britton saying thank you very much to the defense turned in by his third baseman in that top half of the third inning. Milford seeing their first two batters reach on a single and a hit by pitch. But then two great plays back to back turned in by Zawinski to bring an end to the inning with no run scored. And now Ian Osberg swinging early in the count to lead off the bottom of the inning, sends one out to right center field, down for a hit, a bobble out there by Farrell, and that will allow Osberg to hustle all the way around to third base. Farrell able to cut it off, but Took a long time getting that ball in, and Coach DeVito furious as he comes out of the dugout, shouting out to right field at that slow reaction. And so that will likely go as a double, and then an error on the bobble for Farrell. Allowing the runner to advance all the way to third base, so just like that, the tying run, standing at third with no outs in this third inning. And now ball one sent in to Will O'Connor. Northampton cleanup hitter, so Masick now having to face the middle of the order bats with no outs in the inning and the tying run at third and falling behind O'Connor now, two balls and no strikes. Milford breaking out to a three to nothing lead in the first half inning, but since then, Northampton has been responding, chipping away with single runs in each of their first two innings and now the tying run at third and a three ball no strike count on Will O'Connor, and it looks like Milford's going to get their bullpen activated as the pitch misses for ball four. A four-pitch walk to the cleanup hitter, Will O'Connor. He trots down to first. Runners at the corners now for Kevin Bannis, who drove in the first run of the game for, North for Northampton with a two-out single in the first. So six hits now in the game through the first two plus innings for Northampton. They've scored a combined 19 runs through their first two playoff games, but facing elimination here today after they came up short against Braintree, 13 to eight back on Sunday. Now this ball is a tapper back to the pitcher's mound. Masick thinks about throwing to second base, instead will go to first. Masick wanting to try to hold that runner at third base. He knew a throw to second would send that runner home. So instead just went the safe route to first. And so Bannis out one to three. But meanwhile now, Northampton with runners at second and third with just one out. Masick to face Pat Gregashevitz, the catcher, excuse me, the first baseman. Gregashevitz takes the first pitch for a called strike. Gregashevitz did strike out his first time up, so Masick hoping for a K here to hold those runners in place. Here's his 0-1, and that's high. 
It is Alex Gunfriday who has now begun throwing in the Milford bullpen. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and it's hit in the air, out to left field, sending Sasitsky over towards the line. He makes the catch, tagging at third base. And coming in to score is Ian Osberg. So Greg Ashevitz with the sacrifice fly, and now the runner able to advance safely to third base. That throw coming back in towards third, but getting away. And so the runner advances. Milford making the smart decision, sending that throw into third, but getting away from Monahan, and that allows O'Connor with some heads up base running to advance to third base. So now Northampton has tied the game, and they have the go ahead run at third. There are two outs in the inning now after that sacrifice fly by Pat Gregashevitz. And now Derek Zawinski, after turning in that terrific defense in the top half of the inning, a chance to bat with the go-ahead run at third. And he takes a borderline pitch that's ruled outside for ball one. And now a chopper over towards third, but that is foul. It drifts behind the third base coach for Northampton. One ball, one strike count on Zawinski, who singled and came around to score last inning. Here's the pitch, and that's in for a called strike two. All knotted up at three, but some tense moments here for Milford with Will O'Connor at third base. Here's the one, two, and just getting a piece was Zawinski. Getting that one right off the end of the bat to stay alive. Masick now taking a little time as he wipes some sweat off the forehead, comes to the set. And now another 1-2 pitch, and this is sent out to right center field. That's going to be trouble, down for a hit. And to score comes O'Connor on the two-out RBI single for Drew Zawinski. He is now two for two. And with that hit, he gives Northampton a 4-3 lead. So Northampton down 3 to nothing in the blink of an eye in this game. Completely unfazed. And now they lead 4-3 with a runner at first base and two outs in the bottom of the third. And Friday continuing to ramp things up in the bullpen. Now a snap throw to first base from Reynolds after the first pitch in to Mike Michkowski. The runner able to get back. The pitch was a strike. Michkowski lined out to first base. A nice jumping grab for Nocera on that play. And now Michkowski down nothing and two. So again, two strikes on the batter. Masick trying to bring an end to the inning here. As the ball is hit hard, but foul down the first baseline. Gun Friday has now concluded his warm-up toss as he heads back to the dugout. So he is loose and ready to go if needed. And the last thing you want to do is expose your bullpen for a second straight game. But obviously in an elimination game, you have to do what you need to do to try to survive. Basic hoping to get through this inning. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and that's in for a called strike three. So he's able to come through with his fourth strikeout to finally bring an end to the bottom half of the third inning, but not before. Northampton's able to score twice. And they take a 4-3 lead on Milford as we will head now into inning number four of this state tournament game here on MyFM 101.3. And as we get started here in the top half of the fourth inning, Zach Britton into his windup for the first pitch of the frame, but then did not follow through with the pitch. And now Andrew Serio, his battery mate, out to check on him. 
It's a bizarre way to see the inning start. Sasitsky now waiting for that first official pitch. Now here it comes, and it's down and in for ball one. Sasitsky grounding out to first base to conclude the first inning, a three-run first inning for Milford. Looks like they were ready to pick up offensively right where they left off, but they have failed to score in the two innings since, while Northampton has scored four unanswered runs. And Milford right now trying to get energized in their dugout. That's been something that has run a little hot and cold for them through these playoffs. Having a hard time bringing the energy at times when things are going awry. But with Kyle Nocera on deck, he has been the one to get this team going emotionally. And the teammates following suit now. As Sasitsky jumps ahead in the count, three balls and a strike. And so right now, a member of the Northampton coaching staff, I believe that is head coach Holt, out to talk to the home plate umpire, maybe verifying the pitch count. He wanted to make sure that that first wind up out of his pitcher where we did not see the throw go through to the plate was not ruled an official pitch, and it was not. And now Britain able to come back with a called strike, and that will fill the count. Sky starting to brighten just a little bit here in Milford as the payoff pitch comes in up and away, and Sasitsky works a leadoff walk. Now the first baseman, number two, Kyle Milford looked like they were going to possibly go on another rally last inning, but again, it was the defense turned in by Derek Zawinski over at third base that robbed Milford of that scoring opportunity. So trying to start again. Here in this fourth inning, they have their leadoff man on base. Already now for the third time in four innings. As no Sarah fouls the first pitch he sees to the backstop, the count goes to nothing and one. Now the pitch drops in the dirt. Ricochets behind the right side batter's box, but no advance from Sasitsky. The count evens at one and one. Milford for the second straight game wearing their retro style blue uniform tops. They have the gray uniform pants on as they are the road team here today. And a line drive now off the bat of Nocera out into left field for a base hit. Sasitsky hits second. He will go on to third as the throw will come into second base. That holds Nocera to a single. But good heads up base running for Zach Sasitsky. Knew that ball was going to drop, hit second base, kept on going, gets himself to third. On the single for Kyle Nocera, who's now one for two. And Milford has the tying run at third base with nobody out, the go-ahead run at first. And Michael Farrell now coming to the plate. Michael Farrell with a little bit of a lackadaisical play out in right field in that last half inning that resulted in a double turning into an extra base for Ian Ostberg. A big play in the inning as Ostberg eventually came around to score on the sacrifice fly. So Farrell looking to atone for that. Quickly down nothing and one. Now the next pitch drops in the dirt, gets away from the catcher. Sasitsky bluffs down the line, but he will hold. But meanwhile, Nocera able to advance to second base. Milford not wanting to chance the out at the plate as that ball did not get quite far enough away to warrant Sasitsky taking off. But Nocera able to get down to second base. So now the tying and go-ahead runs are both in scoring position with a one ball, one strike count on Michael Farrell. Here's the pitch. And that misses inside. It looked like the umpire wanted to go up with the strike call, but he kept the arm at his side. As that pitch apparently just missed inside. It's Farrell in front, two balls into strike. Zach Britton to the set. And the righty's pitch is taken for ball three. Right now, Northampton playing with their infield in tight all the way around. Even with the grass at first. Second and short, the third baseman Zawinski back a couple of steps. 
It's a 3-1 pitch. Is in for a called strike. Right in the same vicinity that ball three was called. But this time ruled a strike. A full count now on Farrell. He did strike out his first time up. Here's the payoff pitch, and it's a line drive out to left center field. That's down for a hit. Sasitsky will come in to score. Here's Nocera racing around third base. He will score as Farrell is down to second base. He has his fifth double, his fourth double, excuse me, of these 2017 playoffs, brings two runs across the plate. And just like that, Milford is able to jump back on top. They now take a 5-4 to four lead. Michael Farrell, each and every time he has found his name in the starting lineup, has found a way to contribute. Not nearly the at-bat total of a lot of these regulars in the lineup, of course, also working as the team's top starting pitcher. But when he's been in the lineup, he's been good, and now Tyler Almeida will send one back up the middle. That's through for a base hit. They will send Farrell to the plate. He will score. Back-to-back -back RBI base hits for Milford as they now open up a 6-4 lead. Farrell with the double. Almeida with the ground ball up the middle, sneaking through for a hit. And so Milford able to respond. And such a good sign for this team. Their confidence shaken after allowing four unanswered runs to see Northampton take the lead but they're able to come right back. A walk, two singles and a double so far in this inning. No outs recorded. And now the lone runner on the bases is Almeida as we'll go third time through the Milford order. Sankioni looking to bunt, but the ball ended up going over his head. Sankioni so far today has reached on an error and scored and lined out to shortstop. Takes the pitch on the inside edge for a called strike, evening the count. Sankioni's next hit in the playoffs will be his 10th. He is 9 or 25. He has three runs batted in. Now eight runs scored with... His run scored in the first inning, coming around on the two-run double for Aiden Wild. Britain to the set. Here's his 1-1 pitch hit hard to third base. This time sneaking it past the dive of Zawinski. It's a fair ball. Almeida down to second base. He stops there. So there is the 10th playoff hit for Joe Sankioni. And the line just keeps on moving right now for post 59. And it does not appear that there is any activity loosening in the bullpen for Northampton. And Coach Holt now out of the dugout to at least have a conversation with his starter. He's allowed four hits in a row now, along with the leadoff walk. And he will come out of the game, so Looks like we'll see a positional player come in to take over on the pitcher's mound. Looks like it's going to be Osberg, the shortstop, who will come in to take over, and we'll see a corresponding defensive play. So Zach Britton knocked out of this game after allowing the first five batters to reach in the top half of the fourth inning. Northampton was able to briefly take a 4-3 to three lead, but Milford showing good resiliency yet again. They take a 6-4 to four lead, and there are no outs recorded in the top half of the fourth inning, we'll pause for the pitching change back with more when we return on MyFM 101.3. The new pitcher on for post 28 is Ian Ostberg. Started this day as the shortstop for Northampton, but now finds himself on the pitcher's mount. Zach Britton now out of the game and in defensively to take over at shortstop is Mike Michkowski, so the designated hitter comes out onto the field of play. So the pitcher spot will now be active in the lineup. The pitcher spot now the number three spot in the order, which will remain Ian Osberg. 
for as long as he remains in the game. As now Sean Rebello with a swing and a miss on the first pitch he sees a high fastball. Rebello batting with runners at first and second base. Both of those runners the responsibility of the starter Zach Britton. Here's the 0-1 and that's in for a called strike two. Zach Britton threw three plus innings, allowing six runs on eight hits. He walked one and struck out one, but again, still responsible for those two runners. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and it's fought off foul by Rebello. Sean so far today is two for two, a pair of base hits. He scored a run in the first inning was retired on one of those two dazzling defensive plays by Zewinski in the third. Now sends one in the air out to center field, ranging towards right as Banas. He makes the catch, and the runners have to hold. Sharply hit by Ribello, but room for Banas to make the play. That's just the first out in the inning as Milford sends their seventh batter of the frame to the plate, Aiden Wild, batting with two on. And one out. Wild has already driven in a pair of runs today with his first inning double. Was then hit by a pitch in the third. He takes a first pitch strike. So Aiden Wild now with 11 runs batted in through the zone playoffs and state tournament combined. Overall on the season, he now has 41 runs batted in. That is tops on the team. Tyler Monahan led in that category through most of the year, but the two were tied coming into the day here today, and now with two runs batted in for Wild, he takes sole possession of the RBI lead. Here's a 1-1 pitch now, and Wild able to hold up on the swing. No, it made contact with the bat. Says the home plate umpire, a foul ball as Wild went down to one knee trying to hold up on the swing. But the count now goes to one and two. Milford trying to gain some separation now. They have a two run lead, but that lead does not feel safe as that pitch is in for a called strike three. It appeared to be high, but maybe just getting at top of the strike zone, a high strike call sends Wild back to the dugout. And so now Osberg able to get the first two outs of the inning, holding those runners at first and second base. Now a chance to get out of it with no more damage done, but Monahan with other ideas as he steps in. He takes a first pitch strike, so right now Osberg doing a good job of pounding the strike zone. Getting a fly out and a strike out so far. It's Almeida at second and Sankioni at first as this ball has popped up on the infield, playable at the second base bag as the shortstop Michkowski is able to make the catch and that will end the inning. But Milford able to supply a three run rally. It's their second three run inning of the day and they're able to take a 6-4 to four lead now on Northampton as we'll head to the bottom half of the fourth inning as you enjoy coverage of Milford Legion Baseball in the 2017 Massachusetts Legion State Tournament right here on MyFM 101.3. Milford post 59 now with six runs on eight hits with one error. Northampton four runs on six hits with an error. Alex Masick back to the mound and gets a waving swing and a miss from the number nine hitter Andrew Serio as we open up the bottom half of the fourth. A back and forth game. Milford right now up by a pair. And Serio takes one high. Serio grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Be Serio followed by Hector De Jesus and Tim Horton in the inning. As Masek's able to jump ahead with a called strike two on the outside part of the plate. 
We've seen the stands slowly start to fill up as this game has gone on. So Masics one two pitch is hit on the ground to shortstop. Sankione waits for it, bobbles, it gets behind him, and the runner will reach. Well, we know the infield is still a little bit slick after all of the rain we experienced yesterday, but that was a relatively routine play for Joe Sanchione. He can't make it and instead will have to accept his 16th error of the season. Milford right now hoping that that error is not a sign of things to come through the rest of the game, a long way to go. And we've seen at times throughout these playoffs, one error lead to additional miscues as the infield tightens up. It's a one ball, no strike count now on Hector De Jesus, the Northampton leadoff hitter, one for two. Was able to come through with a two out RBI single in the second inning that at the time cut the Milford lead to three to two. Now the Milford lead at six to four. There's a 1-0. De Jesus shows bunt, takes a strike. Reynolds jumping up out of the crouch as if he wanted to send the throw down to first, but held on to it. One ball and one strike. De Jesus struck out in his first at bat. Runner takes off for second. Pitch is swung on and missed. The throw down to second base is there in time. Almeida received the throw from Reynolds. It drifted a little bit towards the shortstop side of the bag, but Almeida grabbed it on the backhand and then swiped the tag back around just in time to get the catcher. That might have been more of a designed hit and run play with the catcher on first base. Instead, it became a straight steal, and Serio out on the caught stealing. And so the Sankione error now erased thanks to the throw from Reynolds. And now a called strike three into De Jesus. And a quick change in mood for Milford in this inning as now all of a sudden it goes from a runner on with no outs to the bases empty and two outs after Masick notches his fifth strikeout. Masick came into this inning with the pitch count at 55. So now this ball is lined out to shallow center field. That will drop in for a base hit. Tim Horton, first pitch swinging, is able to grab his first hit in three trips to the plate. Now batting the pitcher, number 12, Ian Osberg. Once again, the hit column is even between these two teams, eight hits apiece. I had shortchanged Northampton a hit when I gave those lines coming into the inning. They were at seven hits entering the frame. You can now make it eight with that two out base hit by Horton. So Ian Osberg at the plate. Took over on the pitcher's mound for Zach Britton last inning and was able to do a very good job of shutting down the Milford rally after the first five had reached. He was able to induce a fly out, got a called strike out of Aiden Wild, and then got Tyler Monahan to pop out to second base to end the inning. Now a one ball, one strike count. Osberg, a left handed batter, facing the righty Masick. The runner starts and stops down the line from first as the pitch. Misses for ball two. Better speed at first base now with Horton there. He's held on by Nocera. He holds this time as the pitch is in for a called strike two. That started outside and then cut right back to the corner. Very good pitch from Alex Masick, who now brings the count to two balls and two strikes with two outs. Trying for a lower stress inning. Here's the pitch, and instead it's lined out to right field. That's down for a hit, scooped up by Farrell. 
He gets it in quickly this time, so the runner holds at second base. And more base runners for Masick to deal with. And boy, does that caught stealing play loom large now. Had they not gotten that out, we'd likely see another run on the scoreboard for Northampton. Instead, now it's two on with two out and a chance for one of their big bats in Will O'Connor. He takes the first pitch outside. O'Connor singled in the first and was then walked on four pitches in the third. He eventually came around to score what at the time was the go-ahead run for Northampton. Now hits one hard on the ground to third. Monahan has it. He throws across to first, gets it there accurately. And that out will retire the side, so Milford is able to escape the two-on, two-out jam. And that sends us through four completed innings of play on day three of the Massachusetts Legion State Tournament. The first game on the slate where Milford leads against Northampton by a score of six to four on MyFM 101.3. It hasn't been the cleanest of outings by far for Alex Masick, but he was able to hold Northampton off the scoreboard for the first inning of this game in the bottom of the fourth, stranding two runners on. Northampton is now stranded six runners on base through the first four innings. Milford has stranded four, but it is Milford with the six to four lead as they will send batters five, six, and seven to the plate. And getting a little bit of sunshine now to poke through the heavy cloud cover. It's been dark gray skies over Fino Field ever since we arrived earlier this afternoon. But lightning a little bit now as the count goes to one and one on Alex Reynolds, who had a big cut on that last pitch from Ian Ostberg. To the set, pitch is low. Reynolds so far today has an RBI on a sacrifice fly and then hit a rocket to third base that ended up going as a five to three inning ending double play. Now takes a called strike to see the count even at two and two. And the next pitch is high. And a full count now to Reynolds. He now has seven runs batted in through the playoffs with that first inning RBI. Here's the payoff pitch and that's up and in for ball four. And yet again, Milford will have their leadoff runner on. Now batting the left fielder, number 22. They've had their leadoff runner reach base in every inning so far with the exception of the second. They've also had at least one hit in every inning so far. Total of eight hits coming into this inning as now Zach Sasitsky takes a pitch at the bottom of the strike zone. Sasitsky reached base with a walk to start last inning. Now a waving swing and a miss. Goes down nothing and two. Snap throw from Serio to first base, but Reynolds was back standing. That walk from Sasitsky last inning, of course, was the starting point for a three-run rally. Here's the 0-2. Sasitsky able to lay off as that one missed just outside. Tough pitch to take down 0-2, but Sasitsky stays alive. And now the 1-2 pitch is poked out to shallow left field. That is going to drop down for a base hit. Now it's bobbled by O'Connor, but no further advance. He was trying to deke the runner, making as if he was going to catch that ball in the air. But Reynolds was not fooled. He ends up getting into second base as Sasitsky reaches with the bloop base hit. That's his ninth hit of the playoffs. And now two on with nobody out for Kyle Nocera. And he takes a fastball high for ball one. Milford now has had multiple runners on in every inning except the second. 
No, Sarah takes a called strike. They were able to get a two out double in that second inning from Almeida, but he was stranded there. Other than that, it's been a lot of base runners in every inning for post 59. Hoping they can break this game open. Here's the one one pitch and it misses outside. No, Sarah lined out hard to the center fielder his first time up then singled and scored last inning. Osberg's next pitch is swung on and missed. No, Sarah after the pitch, grabs some dirt from outside the batter's box, claps it between his hands, no batting gloves for No, Sarah. He's ready now to see a 2-2 pitch, and it's swung on and missed. That's the second strikeout now for Osberg since he came into the game. A big first out of the inning. It holds Reynolds at second and Sasitsky at first. With now Michael Farrell at the dish. Farrell with a big double. Brought two runs home last inning. Now swings at the first pitch, lines it out to left field for a base hit. They'll wave Reynolds around from second base. Here comes the throw. It's not going to be in time. Will O'Connor slow to get that ball back on the infield. And that allows Alex Reynolds to score from second base. And it gives Milford now a 7-4 lead. Now three runs batted in in the game for Michael Farrell. He's two for three. Now standing at first base with Sasitsky at second. And another at bat for Tyler Almeida, who's had a good day so far. Two for two, a single, a double, and a run batted in. Looking very comfortable now as he has settled into a regular spot in this Milford starting lineup. Here's the 0-1 pitch, that's low. And a nice job again from Serio, keeping that ball from going to the backstop. Runners leading off of first and second. The 1-1 pitch is hit hard through the right side of the infield. Here comes Sasitsky. He will now get held at third base. He slips up as he was rounding hard. A late stop sign from Coach DeVito. But Sasitsky able to get back to the bag. And it might have been the right call as DeJesus was able to get the ball back on the infield quickly. And so there's the third hit of the game for Tyler Almeida. And the bases are now loaded for post 59 for their leadoff hitter, Joe Sankioni. Here's the first pitch of the at bat, and it drops in for a called strike one. Sankioni singled last inning. That hit ultimately drove the starting pitcher, Zach Britton, from the ball game. Ian Osberg out there now in some trouble. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and that one drops off the table. A good pitch. Swing and a miss from Sankione, and he falls behind. Nothing in two. Milford with the bases loaded and only one out. Here's the pitch, and it's hit high in the air. Foul off to the right and out of play. The lights have been on here at Fino throughout this game, despite being the early game on the schedule, getting underway just prior to one o'clock. But with the dreary conditions, they were needed earlier, but now the sun starting to make an appearance. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Sankione, misses low. Sankione one for three, he did reach on an error in the first inning. Osberg back to the set. The one, two, wastes it up and away. Sankione up now, Rubello on deck. Milford with a run home so far in this inning, leading at seven to four. And now Sankione about to see a two, two pitch. And it's swung on and missed for strike three. 
The second strikeout of the inning for Ostberg. But not out of the woods quite yet. He has to deal with Sean Ravello, who is two for three this afternoon. Batting with Sasitsky at third, Farrell at second, and Almeida at first. And Ravello swings at the first pitch, sends it out to right field, but right in the direction of Hector De Jesus, who makes the catch. And Northampton is able to minimize the damage in the inning. Milford electing to hold Sasitsky at third on that hit from Tyler Almeida. And ultimately, Milford squanders the bases loaded chance, so their struggles with the bases loaded continue in these playoffs. But they do grab a run to establish a 7-4 to four lead. And we'll move on to the bottom half of inning number five next on MyFM 101.3. For the second time in the game, Milford has a three-run advantage. Alex Masick out for a fifth inning of work as he throws his first pitch of the inning, ball one to Kevin Bannis. He's now at 72 pitches. Now falls behind 2-0. Masick so far has allowed four runs on eight hits. But has the lead and now delivers a strike. Two and one to Bannis, who's one for two with an RBI single. And now the 2-1 is in for a called strike two. Bannis. Greg Ashevitz and Zuwinski in the inning. Now the 2-2, it's grounded down the third baseline, but foul. The rest of the slate of games today, just three games today as we've now whittled the field down. At 4.30, we'll see Shrewsbury versus Newton, and then at 7.30, a big game between Braintree and Ashland. More on that in a moment. Here's the 2-2 pitch. That is outside and low. They'll check on the swing down at first base. The umpire says no swing from Bannis. A full count now to the first Northampton batter of the fifth. Masick winds and fires, and that is in for a called strike three. It's been a very effective pitch for Masick, maybe a cutter. Coming straight in on the right-handed batter, then breaking back towards the inside corner and able to get his sixth strikeout. One out now, and the base is empty for Pat Gregashevitz. He takes a first pitch strike, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in his last at bat. The next pitch is taken high. So we mentioned that Braintree-Ashland game. That right now is the final game of the winner's bracket. Whoever wins that game is guaranteed a spot in the state championship game. As this pitch has popped up foul over towards the first base dugout. First baseman, catcher, and pitcher all giving chase, but the ball bounces off of the roof of the dugout. A one-two count now on the batter, so we'll either see Braintree or Ashland on the final day of state tournament competition. And meanwhile, the loser of that game would play the winner of this game, we think. The only way that would get complicated is if we see the potential for a rematch from one of the earlier days of the tournament. Legion trying to avoid repeat matchups prior to the championship game if they possibly can. As this ball is now lined to third base, Monahan has it kick off of his glove. And Greg Ashevitz will reach. Bad luck for Monahan as he had that one lined up to make the catch on the line drive, but he couldn't squeeze it. Monahan very upset with himself. It'll go as another tough luck error for post 59. Leads to a one out base runner now for Drew Zawinski. And he takes the first pitch for a called strike one. Zawinski 
has gotten it done with the glove and the bat today. Some great defensive plays, and he is also two for two with a run batted in. Now turning to Bunt, takes the pitch high. Surprising to see. Zawinski turning to Bunt after he's had so much offensive success so far today. It's a one ball, one strike count with Gregashevitz leading off of first. No sign of a bunt this time as Zawinski takes a called strike two. Right now Zawinski levels the bat high over the shoulder. Tall right-hander and he waves and misses at the pitch from Masick and tosses the bat over towards the on-deck area in frustration. More of a lob toss. As he goes down lunging at a pitch far outside of the strike zone. Two Ks in the inning for Masick, now seven for the game. But it's been getting this third out of the inning that has been a trouble spot for Masick so far today. We'll see if he can collect it here against Mike Michkowski. Started the day as the DH is now the shortstop. And he's able to hold up on the swing. Ends up taking ball one. Milford with more throwing over in the bullpen. It looks like it's on Friday once again. Pitch missing high. Masick now up over 80 pitches. Two and oh the count. And now make it three balls and no strikes on Michkowski who is 0 for two so far today. Lined out to first base and then struck out looking. But in the driver's seat. You have to wonder if a walk here might be the day for Masick. Here is the pitch, and it's in for a strike. This is the second time we've seen Alex Confride loosening in the bullpen, so he should be warmed up and ready to go. Here's the 3-1, and that's high for ball four, and right on cue, here comes Coach DeVito out of the dugout. Takes a peek down to the bullpen. As Masick issues his second walk of the game, And right now, he will talk things over with Masick has not taken the baseball yet. We have seen through two of these three state tournament games, Coach DeVito giving his starting pitcher some rope. Masick has been living dangerously in this game. You also think back to night one of the tournament, where perhaps Coach DeVito left Michael Farrell in a batter or two too long in that seventh inning that ended up unraveling for Milford, an eight-run six hit inning for Newton that ended up costing Milford the game. The coach DeVito will stick with Masick here with two on and two out. Greg Ashevitz now at second base with Michkowski at first after the walk. And a chance now for the number nine hitter, Andrew Serio. Once again, coach DeVito showing confidence in his starting pitcher. Masick able to begin the at-bat with a called strike. Two Ks so far in the inning for Milford, but in between, the error over at third base for Monahan and the walk to Michkowski. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That drops in for a called strike, too. So Masick gets ahead. And he finish off the at-bat. The runners out to a lead. As Masick comes to the set. The runners go, the 0-2 pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. So Masick able to strike out the side for the second time in the game. He strands those runners at first and second, eight Ks in the outing for Alex. And if that is the day, he's able to end it on a high note. We complete five innings of play now from Fino Field where Milford post 59 leads Northampton post 28 by a score of seven to four here on MyFM 101.3. And also thanks to the executive directors 
and members of the Massachusetts Correction Officers Federated Union located right here in Milford. Aiden Wild swinging at the first pitch here to get this inning started, sends it deep out to left field. Will O'Connor twisting and turning around, could not find it. And it will be extra bases for Wild, who digs for third base and slides in safely with the triple. Will O'Connor surprised to see how far that ball traveled. There is a light breeze now that's blowing out a bit towards left field. O'Connor spinning around one shoulder, turning around the other way, zigzagging back in left field, but could not make up the ground. The ball gets over his head. Wild initially holding up partway down the line from second to third, but with all the time it took Connor to track that ball down, he kept on going and now has a triple. His second extra base hit of the game. Milford's offense returning to work. Leadoff man on at third base. And a one ball, no strike count now on Tyler Monahan. Now watches the pitch drop in for a called strike, evening the count. Tyler's looking for his first hit today. So far, a fly out to right. He reached on a fielder's choice and then popped out to the shortstop. Hits one hard to the right now and out of play. Tyler's been a little bit banged up in these playoffs. He's the only member of this post-59 roster that has started every single game. Now starting in his 31st game of the year. And sends that one off the end of the bat, fouls it at the plate. And it's now a one ball, two strike count. The sun is ducked back under cover here at Fino Field. For a time it had come out starting to warm the field conditions here, but now starting to feel a chill come across the field again, again with that breeze starting to kick up a bit. One, two count as Monahan pinwheels the bat over the plate. He is ready. Here's the pitch, and it's hit foul to the backstop. Hoping to have precipitation-free conditions for the remainder of this tournament. After having a washout yesterday, here's a one-two pitch and a high chopper off the plate in fair territory right to the pitcher who lobs the toss over to first base to get the out. Wild had to hold at third. The out goes one to three. Monahan is now 0 for four. And one down now for Alex Reynolds. Reynolds has an RBI and a walk in this game, does not have a hit. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Ian Ostberg now in his third inning of relief since taking over for the starter, Zach Britton. Here's his pitch, it misses high. And it's now a two ball, no strike count. Reynolds once again swinging a bright neon orange bat. Here's the 2-0, takes a hack and sends it foul to the backstop. Zach Sasitsky out to collect the ball behind the plate. Sasitsky on deck. Long look in now for Osberg before he fires in the next pitch, which drops in for a called strike two. That will even the count against Alex Reynolds. Here's the 2-2 two -two now. Reynolds able to lay off as that pitch broke too far inside. A full count with Wild at third base. Here's the pitch. And it is sent foul out of play. That looked like it might have been ball four. But Reynolds not taking the chance, swinging the bat, sending it foul. And we will reset with the 3-2 count. The Northampton infield once again in tight on the grass. 
Here's the payoff pitch, and it's high for ball four. So Reynolds walks for the second straight plate appearance. And now for the playoffs, Reynolds has walked eight times. Leads to runners at the corners now for Zach Sasitsky, who's been on the last two times he's come to the plate. A walk in the fourth inning, a single in the fifth. In total, he's one for two. A hit would mean another run. A deep fly ball would mean another run. Milford wanting to continue to tack on to what is right now a three-run advantage. Here's the first pitch for Sasitsky, and it darts down and in for ball one. Good reaction from Andrew Serio behind the plate, was able to backhand that ball. Now the 1-0 pitch is hit up over the backstop and out of play. Milford's bench once again perched right at the edge of their dugout area. Runner takes off for second base as Sasitsky hits one hard out into right field. The catch is made. Now here comes the throw. They're going to send it in towards the plate. And that was a break for Milford. Reynolds was off on contact. That ball hit hard right to Hector De Jesus. Had he sent that throw to first base, he might have had the chance at doubling off Reynolds, but instead sent the throw in towards home plate, guarding against Wild at third. And so that keeps the inning alive for Milford. Very hard hit by Sasitsky, but right at De Jesus. And now it'll take something from Nocera for Milford to salvage at least a run out of this inning. Aiden Wild opening the frame with a triple, but he still stands at third base now with two outs. And Osera will start off looking at a called strike one. Kyle is one for three today. His hit came in the fourth inning. Now hits one hard, but foul wide of third base. And he falls behind, nothing in two. So far, Ian Osberg, despite giving up four runs, has also made some key pitches to prevent further damage for Milford. Here's his 0-2, and it sent foul out of play. Despite scoring four runs in the last two innings, Milford has stranded five men on in these last two frames. They've stranded seven runners on base for the game. And no Sarah find a way to produce here with two outs. He is ready. Ian Ostberg is ready. Here's the pitch. And it is in for a strike. No Sarah trying to hold up on the swing, but he went around. So a strikeout of Kyle No Sarah brings an end to the inning. And Milford, despite that leadoff triple, cannot score. And right now, Northampton gathering everyone around outside the dugout, trying to use that squander for Milford, perhaps as a turning point in momentum in this game. We'll move on to the bottom half of the sixth inning after this break with Milford up 7-4 to four on Northampton here on MyFM 101.3. Alex Masick back on the hill and wasting no time as he deals in a first pitch strike to Hector De Jesus to lead off the bottom half of the sixth inning. Now bounces one in to even the count. And with those two pitches here in the sixth inning, Alex Masick now up to 96 pitches for his outing. Facing the top of the Northampton order, now sending one over the head of Hector De Jesus, who is one for three. An RBI single and a pair of strikeouts. You'd have to think any sign of trouble here for Alex Masick would bring Coach DeVito out of the dugout to make the change. Here's his 2-1. It's high for ball three. Again, you just have to wonder if maybe... It's a 
questionable decision to send Masick back out for a sixth inning. He does battle back with a strike here to fill the count. From the windup, here's the payoff pitch, and it is sent in the air on the infield. Alex Masick there now gives way to Nocera, the first baseman, who will make the catch. And so despite falling behind, Alex Masick able to get the first out of the inning. Retiring Hector De Jesus on the pop up to first base. One down now for Tim Horton, who collected his first hit of the game his last time up in the fourth inning. Overall one for three. And he'll start off with a pitch up and in for ball one. Now the 1-0 is in for a strike. After the conclusion of this game, it will be Shrewsbury and Newton that will take the field. Horton now fighting this ball off out into right field. Here's Farrell coming on to make the catch on the move. That hung up just long enough. At first glance, it looked like it was going to drop in, but Farrell read it well and was able to range in to make the catch. And it's two up and two down in the sixth. And that brings Ian Osberg to the plate. Working hard on the pitcher's mound. Getting in and out of trouble. But he's been consistent at the plate, three for three. A pair of singles, also has a double. And has scored two of the four Northampton runs. Starts off ahead, 1-0. and And now a swing at that 1-0 pitch and the ball driven deep and far out towards the trees and foul ground and left. And now Masick with a 1-1 pitch. It's hit back up the middle just past the glove of Masick. And no one's going to be able to get to it behind the pitcher's mound. And Osberg will reach on the infield single. And bad luck for Milford as Masick just couldn't reach the glove across his body quite far enough to grab that chopper. Might have deflected right off the fingertips and died a few feet behind the pitcher's mound. Masick couldn't get to his feet to field it, and no chance for Sankione to range in that far to get the out. So it could have easily been the final out of the inning, but again, Milford denied the chance for a 1-2-3 frame. Osberg at first after that infield hit. Now Will O'Connor at the plate. The Pitch bounces in, gets away from Reynolds, and now down to second base goes Ian Ostberg. We have not seen a 1-2-3 inning on either side today. Really nothing close to it. The fewest batters we've seen come to a plate in any inning was when Milford sent four men to the plate in the top of the second. Alex Masick now coming back with a called strike against Will O'Connor. So far today has singled, walked, and grounded out to third base. Here's the 1-1 pitch. He tried to hold up on the swing, but the home plate umpire says he went around. Deceptive movement on the pitch from Masick, who now jumps ahead one ball and two strikes. He's over 100 pitches in the outing now. Trying to finish off the sixth, but first we'll step off. And now both pitcher and batter reset. The runner takes off, the one-two pitch is up and away. And Monahan not coming over to cover the third base bag. It would have been a bang-bang play to see if Reynolds could get the throw there in time, but an uncontested steal as it turns out for Osberg. He's now at third with the count even at two to the batter. Here's the next pitch, and it's hit in the air down the line in right field. Will it stay fair? It lands just foul beyond the reach of Michael Farrell. That putting a scare in the Milford fans, but landing just to the right of that chalk line down the right field side. 
And O'Connor will step back to the plate with the count remaining two balls and two strikes. Masick shaking off the first two signs from Reynolds, now has the one he wants. Here it comes, and it's in for a called strike three. And Masick with a couple of fist pumps as he races off towards the first base dugout. He's able to get his ninth strikeout of the game, stranding that runner at third base. Despite the two out single, no score, no runs on the scoreboard for Northampton. It remains seven to four Milford. We'll head on to the seventh inning when we return next on this playoff coverage of Milford Legion Baseball right here on MyFM 101.3. Well, some frustration showing through on the Northampton side after the close of the bottom of the sixth inning. After that called strike three was issued to Will O'Connor, he threw his bat in frustration and was ejected from the game. So O'Connor now out, and it looks like they will shift Hector DeJesus over to right field. And we'll take a look now at the new left fielder. Looks like it will be Matt Booley who takes over. As Michael Farrell will lead off this top half of the seventh inning. And a one ball, one strike count now. So Matt Booley now in right. And he will take over in the cleanup spot in the batting order. And so a correction, that was an 0-2 count on Farrell, not a 1-1 count as now Osberg battles back with a called strike three. And he makes quick work of Farrell to open up the seventh. That's now four strikeouts for Osberg. Meanwhile, for Northampton, they lose arguably their best hitter, their cleanup hitter, Will O'Connor, as he lets the frustration get the better of him after that at bat. And we'll have to be a spectator now. And should Northampton come through with a comeback victory in this game, I do believe after that ejection, O'Connor would have to sit out the next game. Milford hoping to maintain the lead and making that a non-issue. It's a one ball, two strike count on Tyler Almeida who now swings and misses for strike three. And an impressive start to this inning for Ian Osberg who was at 57 pitches entering the inning but is able to quickly get strikeouts. Now of Farrell and Almeida back to back. Now five strikeouts for the reliever. And Joe Sanchione going after the first pitch. He sends it foul off to the left. Nothing and one the count. The base is empty with two down. Alex Masick throwing his 112th pitch to get that strikeout to end the sixth inning. Now an 0-2 pitch into Sanchione is floated out to shallow right field. Out goes the second baseman. It's over his head. Lands in front of Matt Booley. And Sanchione reaches on a bloop base hit, his second hit of the game. And just when you thought it might be Northampton to come through with the first 1-2-3 inning on the pitcher's mound, Sanchione breaks that up with a shot that Gets just over the head of the second baseman out into shallow right. And now Sanchione immediately takes off the pitch low. The throw down to second base is a good one, and Sanchione is out. An excellent throw from Andrew Serio. And we've now seen each catcher toss out a would-be base stealer in this game, and that will quickly bring an end to this top half of the seventh. Ribello has a chance to see just one pitch, but the inning comes to an end on the caught stealing at second base, sending us on to the bottom half of the seventh inning, where Milford continues to lead Northampton by a score of seven to four. Here on your home for Milford Legion Baseball, My FM 101.3. After six hard fought innings from Alex Masick, 
He finally gives way to the bullpen for this bottom half of the seventh. And it will be Alex on Friday. We saw him warm up a few times earlier in the game. Alex Masick at times giving Milford a scare, but he turned in a pretty strong pitching performance, all things considered. Had base runners on against him in every inning. Allowed single runs in the first and second, two runs in the third to briefly give Northampton a lead, but was able to finish off his outing with three scoreless innings. Ended up throwing 112 pitches. So now gun Friday on, and this pitch sent in the air out to center field, but room for Sean Ribello to make the catch. And Kevin Bannis, the center fielder, is retired to open up the seventh. And that will bring up Pat Gregashevitz. He has not recorded a hit yet, however, he did drive in a run with a sack fly in the third and reached on an error in the fifth. Sends one hard and foul off to the right. And meanwhile, it looks like we're going to see the coin toss take place behind the plate for the next game on the slate. The two coaches for Shrewsbury and Newton going through that coin toss ritual. And so it looks like Newton might have won that coin toss. So if you're coming to the field to take in the next game, looks like Newton will be the home team. Coach Greeley and Coach Vaccaro exchanging pleasantries after that coin toss. A good battle on tap next here at Fino Field. But still a ways to go in this one. We're in the bottom of the seventh. A two ball, one strike count on Greg Ashevitz. And the pitch from Alex on Friday is swung on and missed. On Friday in the playoffs has a one and one record. He's thrown three and two thirds innings. Misses outside with that pitch and that fills the count. He's allowed a total of seven hits, five runs, but just one of them earned. He's walked two and struck out four. Here's his payoff pitch and it is swung on and missed and that might have been the knuckleball out of Gun Friday, as that had Greg Ashevitz completely baffled. He swung at that pitch. It ended up down by his shoe tops. And so a strikeout for Gun Friday. That's now 10 Ks for Milford pitching. And now called strike one into Derek Zawinski. A fly out and a strikeout so far in this bottom of the seventh. Friday now bounces that one into the plate, evening the count at one and one against Zawinski. It's two for three. He was retired for the first time in the game in the fifth inning with a strikeout. Now jumps ahead two and one. Good Friday working at a lightning quick pace as this pitch is popped up out into shallow right field. Out goes Almeida. He's underneath. He makes the catch. And wouldn't you know it, a 1-2-3 inning out of the bullpen for Alex on Friday. Our first 1-2-3 inning of this game. And that sends us right on now to inning number eight. It's Milford in front of Northampton by a score of 7-4 in this win or go home showdown. Brought to you right here on MyFM 101.3. Excellent work out of the bullpen by Alex Gun Friday. A fly out, a strikeout, and a pop out for our first 1 2 3 inning in a game where these offenses have been battling back and forth. Milford with a 7 to 4 lead now into the eighth. Sean Ribello at the plate. He was at the dish when. Joe Sanchione was thrown out trying to steal second base to end the seventh. Sean Ribello two for four. Now sends a foul ball out of play off to the right. Evens the count at one and one. Ian Osberg now out for his fifth inning of relief. Entered this frame at 68 pitches. Here's his one one. It drops in low. So far, through four innings pitched, he's allowed a run on five hits. Here's 
Here's the 3-1 pitch now, and it's hit slowly on the ground towards third base, but that kicks foul. So all three runs in that fourth inning were charged to the starting pitcher, Zach Britton. So Osberg has only allowed the single run. So he has really given his team everything he has through these middle innings to give them a chance to come back. The only run charged to Osberg came on the RBI single from Michael Farrell in the fifth inning. Now Rubella with another chopper down the third base line, and again it's foul. Derek Sawinski on both of these grounders down the third base line have, has flipped them over towards the third base dugout to make sure they don't roll back into fair ground. Here's a 3-2 pitch, and it is swung on and missed. Ribello with a strikeout to open the eighth inning. That's six Ks now for Osberg. He struck out two last inning. Now gets a strikeout of Ribello to open the eighth, and that brings up now Aiden Wild, who has a double and a triple to go along with two runs batted in in the game. Now swings at the first pitch and drives it out to center field, sending Bannis back, but he has room to make the catch. He was able to react quickly, raced back, and backpedaled a few more steps and was able to haul in the out on Wild, who was again taking aim at those goal posts out in center field, but not quite the distance on that hit that he had on his inside the park home run on Sunday. So he is out number two. So it's now Osberg who is hoping for a 1-2-3 inning. Pitch into Monahan, misses low, back to back, missing the strike zone to put Monahan ahead 2-0. Tyler has been unusually quiet today, 0 for 4. And now hits one high and far down the left field line. That will leave the yard, but in foul territory. Ends up bouncing off the trees in foul ground and then coming back on the playing surface. The count goes to two and one. So Tyler trying to keep this inning alive with Alex Reynolds on deck. He is ready. Osberg on the mound ready. And the pitch, this is high for ball three. Should Tyler reach, Alex Reynolds would be next. The 3-1 pitch is driven in the air out to center field, again sending Bannis back. Now circles around and is able to make the catch. As Milford's three and four hitters both make solid contact out to center field, but Kevin Bannis able to make the play each time. And so all of a sudden, these offenses going quiet. A 1-2-3 inning now on the Northampton side will send us to the bottom of the eighth inning, co coming down to the wire in this one. Milford with the 7-4 lead still over Northampton here on MyFM 101.3. After a 1-2-3 seventh inning, Alex Gun Friday back out on the mound, needed just 13 pitches to get through that seventh. And now deals are called strike one into the number eight hitter in the Northampton lineup, Mike Michkowski. He grounds one now down the third base line. It's a foul ball. And the count goes to nothing and two. Michkowski today, a line out, a strikeout, and a walk. He'll be followed by Andrew Serio and Hector De Jesus. Here's the 0-2 pitch, it loops high. Now the 1-2 is hit hard on the ground. A diving attempt for Sankione. He makes the play. He throws to first base, an ill-advised throw. But fortunately, Nocera is able to reel it in. No chance to get Michkowski. A good effort by Sankione on the dive, but he was all the way out, even with the outfield grass. No way he was going to get to his feet and make that throw in time. So an infield single for Michkowski. The leadoff man on. And 
Now Serio takes a look at a called strike. Short lead at first base for Michkowski. Here's the pitch. This is outside. The last time Andrew Serio was at the plate, he represented the tying run with two outs in the fifth. But Alex Masick was able to strike him out to end the inning. Now sends one on the ground towards third. Monahan has it, throws to second to get the out there. Now the throw to first, not in time for the double play. The throw from Almeida, short hop the bag. Again, Nocera was able to keep it from getting away. Milford able to cut down the lead runner at second base, but Serio safe on the fielder's choice. Runner on with one out for the leadoff hitter, Hector De Jesus, now up for the fifth time. He takes the first pitch up and in, now a snap throw to first, and that sends Serio scampering back to the bag. He's able to get back with the dive. Hector De Jesus, one for four, with a pair of strikeouts. Here's the pitch, and it's in for a strike. Tejesu struck out looking in the first and in the fourth, but did drive in a run with his single in the second. Here's the 1-1 pitch, hit hard over to shortstop, a diving stab by Sankione. He takes it to the second base bag for the out, and his throw to first base is in time for a 6-3 inning ending double play. Tremendous by Joe Sankione. That hop was a tricky one. He was able to play it, race to the second base bag to get the out there, and his throw just beat De Jesus to first base. And one of the most important defensive plays of the season turned in by Milford post 59. It brings an end to the eighth inning. And we will head on to the ninth. A 7-4 Milford lead over Northampton on this playoff coverage of Milford Legion Baseball on MyFM 101.3. We've talked so much about Milford's defense through the end of the regular season and throughout these playoffs. At times it's been their Achilles heel, but Joe Sanchione turning in a dandy of a double play to bring an end to the bottom of the eighth inning, a 6-3 double play. Putting Milford three outs away from earning a trip to day four of this tournament. First they come to the plate in the top of the ninth and Alex Reynolds falling behind against Ian Osberg, nothing in two. Osberg has looked like he has gotten stronger as this outing has gone on. Here's the 0-2 and that's in for a called strike three. A three pitch strikeout of Alex Reynolds. And Osberg now up to seven Ks. He's allowed just a single run on five hits. He's walked two and now struck out seven. He's retired the last five batters he's faced. Make that the last six batters he's faced. A one ball, no strike count. Now a two ball, no strike count quickly on Sasitsky. And now a called strike issued in. So check that, it's been four consecutive batters set down by Osberg, but seven of the last eight did have the two out single mixed in by Joe Sanchione, who was then quickly erased on the caught stealing. Then a one, two, three, eighth inning, and now a strikeout to open up the ninth. He has fallen behind Sasitsky, three and one, and now ball four issued low. And that will give post 59 a one out base runner. Milford has had fewer scoring opportunities through these later innings as again, Osberg has gotten very tough. Their last good scoring opportunity came in the sixth. As the first pitch into Nocera is fouled away, kicks off the very top of the backstop and then ricochets back 
toward the Milford dugout. Here's the 0-1 pitch now, that misses high. In that sixth inning, Aiden Wild led off with a triple. And then with one out, Alex Reynolds walked, setting up runners at the corners, but then Osberg able to get the final two batters here. No, Sarah pokes one through the right side of the infield for a base hit. So all of a sudden now, back-to-back -back runners have reached base for Milford. The walk and now the single, the second hit for Nocera. He's now two for five. Milford with their 14th hit. They're out hitting Northampton 14 to 11. And of course they have the lead in the run column as well, seven to four. They'd love to push across a couple of insurance runs here. They have two on with one out. And an 0-1 count on Michael Farrell, who hits one on the ground to third base, scooped up by Zawinski. He throws to second base, but wild, it gets away. Out into right field, here comes Sasitsky to score. They'll wave Nocera all the way around. He will come to the plate, and a costly error for the third baseman, Drew Zawinski, who had played such a solid defense at third base today. But his throw to second base gets away, and it allows Milford to score two big runs to take a 9-4 lead. Had eyes on a 5-4-3 double play, but the throw getting away. That's the second Northampton error. So Sasitsky comes around from second base. No, Sarah able to race all the way around from first base to score. Farrell winds up at second base as now this ball is lifted in the air out to left field where DeJesus makes the catch. And Tyler Almeida is retired. But still a very good day at the plate for Tyler. Three for five with a double and a run batted in. And we'll now see the sixth plate appearance from Joe Sanchione. He, of course, singled his last time up, but was then erased from the base paths on a caught stealing. A wave and a miss puts him down in the count, nothing in two. Farrell remains the runner at second base with two down. And now the 0-2 pitch from Osberg is popped up. The catcher racing over towards the backstop, but that is off into the bleachers. Where the players for Shrewsbury post 397 take in the final innings of this game. That bounced down right in front of them on those bleachers. So Milford's fellow zone four team taking in the remainder of this Early game on the schedule. Here's another 0-2 to Sanchione. It's swung on and missed. Just briefly gets away from Serio, but he has no problem firing down to first base to get the final out. So Osberg ends this ninth inning with his eighth strikeout, but a costly error on the Northampton side. Allows two runs to cross the plate for Milford. And post-59 will carry a 9-4 lead into the bottom of the ninth inning. It will be Alex Gunfriday back out of the dugout looking to finish this one off. We'll see if he can do it when we come back next on this coverage of Milford Legion Baseball here on MyFM 101.3. Once again, it is Alex Gunfriday wasting no time to get the inning started. He deals ball one in to the number two hitter, Tim Horton. And now battles back with a called strike. Gunfriday now with that lead a little bit more comfortable. A five-run advantage for post-59, now up nine to four. And a two-one count into Horton, who lifts the pitch out into right field. In a few steps is Michael Farrell. He makes the catch. And one down now in the ninth. Friday 
so far has allowed just one hit since coming into the game in the seventh. Right now, Alex Masick in line to get the win, and with three innings to close out the game, if Gunfriday can finish it off here, he would earn a save. Deals in strike one to Ian Ostberg. Lefty versus lefty matchup, and now the pitch misses low. Osberg has given his team absolutely everything he has had today. He is four for four at the plate. He's pitched five innings of relief. Now sending a deep fly ball well into foul ground and left. Milford racing as far as they could go. Tyler Monahan right up against those left field bleachers but couldn't make the play. The count goes to one and two. Osberg in six innings of relief. Scattered six hits, allowed three runs, but just one of them earned. Walked three and struck out eight. But now faces a one-two pitch from Gun Friday and lifts it in the air out to right field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. And now five for five on the day is Ian Osberg as he fights that pitch off, drops it in front of Michael Farrell for a one-out single. And so that brings up the cleanup spot in the batting order for Northampton, but it is not Will O'Connor who comes to the plate. Instead, it is Matt Bowie who takes over after Will O'Connor was ejected after striking out to end the bottom of the fifth inning, or excuse me, the bottom of the sixth inning. And now Bowie takes the first pitch for a called strike. Not much of a lead for Osberg at first, as now this ball is hit hard to shortstop, takes a tricky hop on Sankione, gets up over his shoulder. Sankione had that all lined up for a potential game-ending double play, but then a tough hop as it reached the infield dirt went right up over his shoulder. And I think that will go as a base hit for Matt Bowie, who's able to get the pinch single. And so some noise now for Northampton as they put two runners on with only one out. And ball one high to Kevin Bannis. And how big do, do those two insurance runs look now? Otherwise, this would be the tying run at the plate. As Gun Friday issues a strike. The bullpen is quiet for Milford right now. Kevin Bannis at the plate. Has one hit in this game. It came all the way back in the first inning. This game about two and a half hours old now. One out deep in the bottom of the ninth as Bannis takes a pitch that misses just outside. Osberg, who singled, is at second. Matt Bowie at first after his base hit. Now 13 hits for Northampton as that pitch darts low and inside. They'll check down to first base on the swing. No swing, says the infield umpire. And it's now a three ball, one strike count. And Alex Gunfriday dangerously close to loading the bases with only one down. Milford at Bad infield hop away from this game being over. Now, all of a sudden, one pitch away from things getting very interesting. Here is the 3-1. It is not close. Bannis with the walk. And the bases are now loaded. That's the first walk allowed by Gun Friday. And now Coach DeVito will come out of the dugout. We very rarely see an instant move for a pitching change from Coach DeVito. He likes to get the pulse of his pitcher out there before he makes a decision. I do not believe Milford has had any other pitchers loosening since Gun Friday has come into the game. Coach DeVito will leave his first year lefty out there in this bases loaded, one out situation. Right now, he will face the number six hitter, Pat Gregashevitz. Yeah. 
Lefty pitcher, righty batter. And the first pitch is waved at and missed. Greg Ashevitz has struck out twice today. Here's the set and the 0-1, and that misses low and outside. This game not over yet. Milford up by five. But Northampton with the bases loaded. One out in the ninth. Here's the 1-1, and it's hit softly over towards the third base dugout. A foul ball brings the count to one and two. We're only about an hour and five minutes away from the scheduled start time for Shrewsbury and Newton. But still, this game in doubt. Here's the one-two pitch, and it's sent in the air out to left field. On comes Sisitsky. He is able to make the catch and will now send the throw back in towards third base. Osberg had to hold up as that was not sent deep enough for Northampton to give it a try at the plate. So Greg Ashevitz flies out to left field. Milford is now one out away from a victory, and Coach DeVito now back out of the dugout. And so he will make the change here. He leaves Gun Friday in there. to face Greg Ashevitz, and now he will make the change. And it looks like it's going to be Kyle Nocera now coming on to take over on the pitcher's mound. And so we'll see some defensive changes here. Aiden Wild is now your first baseman with Kyle Nocera taking over on the pitcher's mound. And so right now, Coach DeVito putting a lot of trust in Kyle Nocera. Nocera, of course, so much talent, but as he has been working through some new mechanics here late in the season and into the playoffs, the command has not always been as sharp for Nocera as we have seen it in the past. And he does not have much margin for error here as he will inherit a bases loaded, two out situation. Alex Gunfriday ends up pitching two and two thirds innings. He allowed a total of three hits and a walk. Struck out a single batter. And so now Kyle Nocera in a situation where it might be a safe situation here for Nocera as well with the tying run on deck. Despite Milford with the five run lead, three runners on with two outs in the inning and the batter will be Derek Zawinski. And so what a situation this will be for Zawinski after it was his throwing error that gave Milford two insurance runs in the top half of the ninth. He will now come to the plate as the last hope for Northampton with the bases loaded and two outs. So here we go, no Sarah's warm up tosses are completed exchanges a few final words with Alex Reynolds. Nocera making his sixth appearance on the pitcher's mound this year, has a 3.11 ERA. And immediately Nocera will call Reynolds back out to the mound, wants to make sure he stays on the same page. Nocera has thrown nine innings so far this year, has allowed 10 hits, six runs, four earned, six walks to 13 strikeouts, has faced 46 batters, opposing batters hitting 256 against Nocera, and now ready with his first pitch, it's low. And ball one to, Drew Z to Derek Zawinski, who is two for four today, had hits in his first two at bats, Now the 1-0 pitch, it's swung on and missed. A good live fastball from Nocera. The hard throwing lefty against the big tall right-hander, Drew Derek Zawinski. And now takes a curve ball in for a called strike two. And Nocera ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes. Northampton runners leading off of every base. 
With two outs in the ninth inning, here is the pitch, and it's swung on and missed for strike three. So Nocera comes out and slams the door with a strikeout of Derek Zwinski, and Post 59 will play on once more in this state tournament. They defeat Northampton by a final score of 9-4. So for the second straight game, Milford faces elimination. They faced some tough situations early in this game, seeing an early lead melt away. But they were able to come back to retake the lead in the middle innings, and their pitching really held up well through the late stages of this ball game. Alex Masick, Alex Gunfriday, and Kyle Nocera all pitching well. And the end result, a 9-4 win for Milford. All right, Aiden. You had some big shots out there today. What are you doing at the plate that's working? Uh, I think I'm just getting on time and just trying to make every pitch count. As a team, the bats seem to be coming alive right now. What is Coach saying to you guys that maybe wasn't clicking? Uh, I mean, I know, like, especially with the state tournament, since uh, as a pitch limit, we just want to get deep into counts and really uh, make their, the other team's bullpen go to work. You guys are the host team, so some people might say, you know, you got in here by luck, but what is the coach telling you guys to make you feel like you belong here? I think we all know, like, everyone on the team knows that we belong here. We've proved it the past two games, and we're going to continue to do that. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, I was just going to go and attack the hitters, mix it up a little bit. You had some uh, really dirty pitches there. Uh, what were you throwing that was working? Uh, the curve and the knuckleball were really working for me today. Uh, what is Coach saying to you about you know being here as the host team? Some people might say you don't belong here, or it's luck. How, how does he make you realize that you guys belong here? Uh, he just tells us every day that we belong here. Every we, day. We had a great season this year. We went like 20 and 8, and really? we, we deserve to be here, and we can play with anyone. Nice. Thank you. Uh, thank um, you. Some tough innings there, but you pulled out, kept it to four runs. What were you doing? What was working? What wasn't working? Uh, just staying ahead in the count first pitch strikes helped, and the offense really bailed me out. After we were down that one run, we, we really picked up the intensity throughout the whole team, so that was big. How is the team as a whole dealing with the rules, the Legion rules with the pitch counts and stuff like that? Uh, it's good that we're, we're deep for pitchers, and we're, we're just adjusting to it like every other team, and it's, it's good we have a lot of arms on staff. And I ask this question to everyone. You know, you're the host team. What is the coach telling you guys to make you realize that you belong here? Well, in the beginning, it was it's good to get a second chance, not winning the zone playoffs. And coming here, to, uh, dropped our first game, we just had to uh, look ourselves in the mirror and just where do we want to be at the end of this tournament. We didn't want to go two and done in our own tourney, so we just picked it up.